Hi guys, welcome back, Stupid Fast Nation. Hope y'all are having a great killer week and weekend. Here in the shop, I've been extremely busy. We are in what I like to call full-fledged winter mode. And in winter mode, this is my buy season, guys. This is where I make the most money. I buy as many of these clapped out, beat up, four-wheelers and dirt bikes as I can on Facebook Marketplace and through subscribers and whoever else I can get my hands on them. I get really good deals because it's out of season in Pennsylvania. We're, we have snow and really freezing cold weather here uh, for probably the next five or six months roughly. And so not a lot of people really like to go out and freeze their nuts off in the cold and go riding. So that makes machines here super, super cheap. This is what we call the down season or the build season. So. I acquire all my machines during this time of the year. And then I usually wait until tax season comes, maybe like late January, early February. And then I start to sell these off because we'll come back into riding season again. And then people will, they'll be in high demand basically, which is when you can get the most money for your machines. So I'm going to be pumping out the machines left and right here on the channel. And we're gonna start with this one today, guys. It's a 2005 Honda 400EX. I got a really, really good deal on this one. I got it for 500 bucks and I traded a 2007 TRX 250EX on top for this one. Um, I did not get to hear it run. It does need a little bit of TLC to be a good running and driving four-wheeler. I was told it's a good running uh, engine. I took the word of the buyer for it, which I normally never do, but it's because I know the buyer. Um, I was told it might smoke a little bit from the silencer having some residue in the exhaust. We'll see once we get to that part. It, it, it wouldn't hurt if I have to put a top end on it. It doesn't really cost too much. Um, but anyways, we're going to get this thing rolled into the back in our new workspace. I'm going to show you guys around the shop a little bit. We can see what's going on here. Let's get it going, guys. All right, guys, so check it out. You can see things are a little hectic in here, but, but I must say, I am getting a little better with my organization. Let's take a quick walk around and so you guys can get a really good idea with what's going on here in the shop. So as you can see, normally this area, the race truck kind of sits here and I've just got piles of parts and, and other random stuff just kind of piled up around the truck. Well, we got that guy shifted over and we got all the project quads and everything. Not all of them. I have more outside yet and in my shed, but I've basically got all my good ones sitting in here. So we'll start from the top. Turbo blaster is still here, guys. Turbo two stroke blaster still here. Got to do a little R&D on that one. Uh, I think we're going to go back to a draw through style carb. Not going to get crazy in depth and detail, obviously, in this video, but she's still here. We're still going to make videos on it. ATC 600R, uh, currently looking for a new home for that. The first person to give me not even a decent offer for the thing, just kind of what I have into it. Uh, you can email me in the description. You can email me in the description below if I could speak properly. And uh, let me know if you're interested in that. Runs and rides good. Sometimes can be a pain in the butt to cold start. I just give her a little shot of ether, fires right up, runs great. As you guys saw in the videos, Quadzilla 500. I barely bring that one out. Uh, love that quad. That's gonna get a cover on it and that's gonna be basically my retirement plan. Banshee Swap Kids quads over there. I don't know what future plans I have for that one, but she's there. TRX 250R, I believe that one's in 86. I have a whole brand new 310 motor up on the shelf for that one. RD350, that's a 75, so it's a reed valve, six speed transmission. At some point we're gonna restore that one. And out here on the end, these two are special. You might see these in some upcoming videos. 
uh, CR 500s, both of them. Actually, that's a CR 250R frame, a 2001 that was modified to fit a CR 500 engine. Very cool stuff, guys. This one's going to be a full ground up OEM build. This one's going to be a very, very special build. So keep an eye out for that one. We have my old Banshee sitting here on the end. That is the one basically that started this YouTube channel. That's my lime green frame with the Rust-Oleum paint job. I have the 392 motor sitting back there. Oh, at some point we'll do a frame up build on that one because that's my trail beast. Um, we have today's video, obviously. We have a 2015 Husqvarna TE85, pretty popular little bike. It's a big wheel version. Same thing as the KTM, basically. Uh, we got two LTR 450Rs. You will definitely see these two coming up. We're going to do a really nice comparison series. Probably do fully modded. And when I say fully modded, I mean big bore, stroker, bigger valves, port and polish, every modification, suspension, the whole nine yards. As you can see, this thing is fully decked out. I have all the rest of the parts sitting on a shelf for it. This one's going to be a full stock deal. So we could do stock versus fully modded on the dyno <laughs> so that way we could actually test what the modifications are doing to increase power for you uh 2015 yz250 you guys probably saw that in last week's video uh that's the one i got from garage mc matt i love that bike no plans on getting rid of it at this point 2007 or 2006 uh trx 250ex great quad almost nothing wrong with it just little dumb tlc shit and then that one would be listed for sale trx 450r this one's a 2005 uh yeah obviously it's going to need a ton of tlc but it has a title clean title ready to go i just got to fix it up i have a couple of these here as a matter of fact one of them we're going to be doing a crf 450r engine conversion on it so keep an eye out if you're interested in that and then we have the good old 1986 lt 250r i'm missing the hood i'm missing the gas tank cap but everything else is here for it i have special heel guards that you can't get for these anymore special front bumper debating on if i want to do a full ground up rest on this one because it's an 86 and they're the unpopular year so they don't bring a lot of money and value but it would still be cool to have this old school 252 stroke legend here on the channel so she's coming in she's got some rare parts and she's going to be seen here very shortly on the channel. So, and then moving back here, guys, you can kind of see, I know I kind of let you guys off the hook in last week's video, but I wanted to show you guys back here. I've been working really hard to kind of make this a personalized workspace. I've got my toolbox of six years. I think this is six years old. Um, I got this guy fully organized. I got shelving. I'm working on organizing specific tools that I will use over here. We've got the black glass. Everything's blacked out. I basically took everything out of here and then emptied the whole thing, painted all of it black, and then started putting stuff back in slowly, reorganizing it. And then, so as you can see, I'm not fully done yet. I've got an idea over here with boxes. And then this is going to get all boxes. So that way this will be all be blacked out also. But all these parts will be organized in a way that you can't really see them because they'll be covered by a black lid basically. Just like these awesome cabinet covers. And then at some point we're going to take these LED lights out. And we're going to do the hexagon style lights. And then that way it looks a little more professional. I'm going to get a TV put in over there. So that when I'm doing dyno stuff I can record and show you guys what the dyno numbers are. There's the dyno, as you can see. We got her all worked out. I'll get a computer put over there on that workbench. That's all my Banshee stuff kind of hidden over there in the background. And then that's kind of the workspace, guys. Not a whole lot going on. Working on the YFZ450 engine build video for this guy. And yeah, so that's pretty much it for the shop update. Let's get back to work on the 400.
Alright guys, so given this thing a quick once over, there is definitely some things we have to look at on this 400EX. Let's go ahead and do some preliminary checks on this thing, kind of see where we stand as far as like maintenance goes on it, and then I'm going to gather up a quick list of things we need to do in order to get this thing back to a fully functional, decent shape 400EX. So normally when I'm working on these things, the easiest thing to do is just start checking over the normal routine maintenance items. Um, I, I don't want to, I guess the goal is to spend the least amount of time working on this as I can, which optimizes my time and profit margin. Um, and that's basically the best tip of advice I can give you guys. I'm not saying skip all of the very important, necessary things to fix and change on this. I'm just saying is find the best way that works for you to optimize how you're going to fix something if you're planning on selling it for a profit. Um, that's kind of how I do it. So anyway, as I can see, this is missing a tail light right off the bat. The oil filter, sorry, <laughs> the air filter, it doesn't look that bad. Um, I'll definitely get you guys a close up of that. It definitely looks like we could reuse that. It's not even dirty, honestly. Uh, the battery's missing, but I have a shelf full of batteries that I keep in hand for uh, four wheelers and other things like that. And then so I have one on the charger. Uh, I know the cover for the side of the carburetor is missing. Let's see the brakes work on this thing. Clutch seems to work, but the bolt's kind of hanging out all sideways for some reason. Don't know why, but it does work. Um, I see the clamps missing for the intake. We're going to go ahead and take this uh, gas tank off, basically. And then that way we could do the valve clearances. And then also, I believe this is the top motor mount sitting here on the heel guard that has to go on the top of this engine. I prefer to have the motor mount on. I know some people run them without, but if I'm gonna sell this to another individual, I would prefer everything that's supposed to be working on it works on it. So headlight, you know, I don't have a tail light on the shelf for this. I might order one, you know, stuff like that. I want that stuff to be operational for the next person. I know tail light doesn't seem like a big safety concern, but when you're out riding in the dark, and so you have a whole chain of people and you can't see your tail light when you're hitting the brakes. I mean, they slam right into you, you know? That's why the dunes and stuff, they literally require you to have a tail light on your machine. So let's get some tools out. And I think we're gonna uh, take these plastics off and get a better idea of what's going on here. It's funny, they're using these fittings that don't belong <laughs> on four wheelers and dirt bikes. Uh, these little plastic things there. These are for automobiles. These are these uh, Little things here that you pop in the side of plastic or whatever like for wheel wells This stuff's not too hard guys. It's just kind of time-consuming really and it's just you know getting all the little bolts removed and things like that, but I'll tell you what it comes in handy Having an impact like this it makes everything come off 20 times easier. <laughs> oh, and I know we will be taking care of that at some point also. That is ridiculous. That sounds bad. Okay, so that bolt doesn't even belong in there. That doesn't, that didn't even screw in there. So this is what happens, guys. You get into these machines and you see that, you know, previous sellers and such weren't honest and it sucks, man. I know that feeling. I play the same game we all play. The only difference is I try to make sure when I'm buying something that uh, I know without a doubt it is what it is. I try to make sure I look everything over. You know, that's the other thing. We should probably check the oil on this also since these things are known to smoke. Actually, that doesn't look bad. 
That doesn't look bad. It's just a little bit low, but I'm okay with that. That looks super, super clean. So not terrible. I'm just gonna have to add a little bit and it doesn't leak. There's nothing on the floor. So I know that's not an issue. Oh my God, that is so bad. There's like no gas in this thing anyways. Oh yeah, don't forget these little side straps here. Boom, boom. There's the tank and also the plastics. <laughs> oh yeah, top motor mount's missing. Which is okay because we're gonna do the valve clearances anyway. So these caps are pretty much all the same for the intake and exhaust. All four of these bad boys. I just use a big adjustable to crack them loose. Sometimes though, they get stuck. And I rec highly recommend, as a matter of fact, I'm gonna let you guys see this here. I want you to see what I found in the cap here. I'm kind of wondering what that is. It's like a bug or grass. It's like, I don't know. Some sort of bug or grass. And then we have to roll this thing over to top dead center before we can check the clearances. But that's pretty simple. We'll pop the spark plug out so we can see where it's at. Oh, and I see this thing has a set of uh, aftermarket head studs on it because I see an, a uh, 12 point head nut on this thing so I'm kind of wondering and it looks like stainless steel too it's a good one not a piece of junker so that's pretty cool and I think we need a 17 millimeter I could be wrong I could be wrong and then I think we pop that and that off okay That was pretty easy. Okay, so that's top dead center. I do feel the slightest bit of wiggle in between those rocker tips there, so that's a good sign. I don't know the spec off the top of my head. Um, but there's two ways to do valve clearances on these. One of them is the old school trick is using one flat of the nut to measure your turn basically. So like wherever the nut is, take two points and then line that point up with the part of the flat of the, where the flathead screwdriver goes in the screw and then take that, turn it from the one point tight, snug it all the way in first, obviously put it on the one point and then turn it to the second point lefty loosey and that will give you enough space and that's supposed to technically set your clearance but um i don't really follow that i actually like to uh do it by the manufacturer's spec but sometimes these 400s will still tick anyways for some reason so when they still tick like that um it's better to go back and you can make them just a pinch tighter or looser, uh, which, you know, there's different tricks for each machine make and model. But for this one in particular, let's check the clearance first and see where we land. Well, let's grab a four thousandths and see if we can fit that guy in there. Can't really fit a four in there. There's a two. Okay, so now they're all loose. Let me go check my clearance real quick. How 
All right, guys, so the final clearance should be exhaust five thousandths and the intake four thousandths. So that's what we're going to set these to. So I'm going to go ahead and grab a four thousandths feeler. I'm going to do my intakes first. All right, now, and we're talking just snug, guys. Okay. I mean, it was just ever so slight of an adjustment, enough that you can barely tell. Look at that motor move. See that? That's why we need the top motor mount in. All right, let's grab a five thousandths for the exhaust. All right, and that ought to do for the valve clearances. That takes care of the valve clearances. We can get these caps put back on, get this top motor mount put in, and then we can move on, see what else is going on with this thing. They were slightly out. They were a little on the tight side, so I'll be anxious to see what it sounds like if we get it running. And these, you just gotta snug them up. Some people get crazy with torque specs, and I think that's important for people that don't know how to properly tighten things, but, or, you know, very valuable things like cylinder head when you're working with stuff that's got to be very, very specific. But I think for something like this, where it's just, you know, some caps with an O-ring seal, snug it very gently, and then you should be okay. So, all right, let's get this motor mount in next. Sometimes these things can be... A real pain in the nutsack to get lined up properly. So it'll be interesting. But what fun is it when everything is just easy? There's no fun in that. Oh my god, it all pretty much lined right up. Why wouldn't they put it back in? Yeah, look at that. Boom. Wow. I, I think I've almost never had one go that easy before. What do we got? 14 mil. <clears throat> okay, that's that. So that pretty much takes care of that piece. Man, it'd be really nice to see if this thing runs. So we don't have to worry about that. We should take the carburetor off though and uh, jet this. So I'm gonna go ahead and get this popped off real quick and then we'll take it over to the table and get her jetted. Hi right, guys, so we're gonna keep this a little simpler. A lot of people get really crazy with carburetors. Um, I don't think they're very hard things to learn at all. Oh wow, that wasn't even tight. Um, they're actually pretty simple in my opinion, but a lot of people get confused with them. <laughs> I think that's why we see so many of them on Marketplace needing a carb rebuild. So with that being said, I think the best way to tackle this is to just give you guys a really quick overview of basically how this works, how these things work, okay? Let's try and get this off, there we go, boom. Okay, so I'm not worried about the mess. Okay, I expect there to be some fuel. So, very simply put, guys, okay? Got a couple things going on here. The first thing is, you see this guy down here? This is called your float. This whole bottom piece here is your float bowl. This little rod with the little rubber diaphragm inside of this right here is called an accelerator pump. Okay, so what happens is, fuel comes into the bowl of the carburetor via this hose right here sorry let me get in frame via this hose fuel comes in down through the center valve right here fills up the bowl with fuel and then this guy is a valve basically that shuts that off when it gets to a certain point boom shuts it off so you can't overflow or overfill the carburetor so that's the first thing 
fuel comes through here, boom, this stops the fuel from coming in. That's what fills it. It's like a metering valve, basically. Then these ones are a little simpler. You just have idle adjustment, which as you can see, this screw is on the outside of the carburetor. It goes up here and adjusts this when you turn it. This one I think is a little ratchet and broken though, as you can see. So that would adjust basically the height of this, your arm, throttle arm, but that's really just your flapper that lets air into the motor. So by adjusting that, you can turn the idle speed up or down. And then you have two jets. You have a main jet and you have a pilot jet. And that's pretty much standard practice on any carburetor. You have a main and a pilot. And then sometimes on four strokes, you have a second or third jet, like a starter jet or a air jet. And then you have an air screw, which basically meters the amount of air being mixed with the pilot jet for your idle circuit and your low RPM up to about eighth throttle. After eighth, the needle takes over. The needle inside of the float, which is right there. I don't know how well you guys can see that. That guy goes all the way down into the main jet. So then when you're hitting the throttle, the slide opens up a little bit, boom. Let's fuel come in through the main jet. And then the needle lets it bypass. The needle has a taper to it, shrinks down, and it allows more and more fuel to come in the more you press that. So the, the uh, piston can suck in more fuel. So that's pretty basic rundown of how a carburetor works. All this stuff needs to be tuned in properly to get this running. And these little tiny holes need to be free of debris. And that's what we're gonna work on, making sure this is jetted properly to the right size for the slip-on that's on and any other modifications, and then also making sure the air is dialed in properly. So I'd like to check the jet sizes on this first and foremost to make sure going forward, we are jetted correctly for the modifications. So we don't have any issues running once it's running, hopefully. All right, so 38 pilot. Boom. I think that's small, but I'm gonna double check. Yes, yeah, a little over dramatic here with the uh, adjustable. That says 148. That is way too lean for this. 148, that's a stock jet size. And this has an aftermarket slip on on it. So we've got to bring this size up. Be right back. Okay guys, so it turns out that both of these jets are actually stock. The 2005 400X came with a 38 pilot jet and then it also came with a 148 main jet. So I'm gonna run a quick calculation and we're gonna bump these up to our elevation. It's probably gonna be either a 40 or a 42.5 pilot. And then we're probably gonna go with like a 165 or 168 main roughly. It never hurts to have a little bit of extra fuel, not a lot. And then I'm also gonna to toss this in the ultrasonic cleaner behind me, my Viver ultrasonic cleaner and clean this baby up. If you guys are interested in that, Make sure you check out the link in the description below. Appreciate y'all. All right, now, a lot of people ask me, how do you get, like, what, what do you do for jets? Like, what do you do, just buy jets every time? No, actually, I have a million cases of jets, and basically, I go through these each time I need a jet. Now, I see the, these are basically, and they're all sorted. I buy these little cases from Amazon, and then I write the jet sizes on them. Bada bing, bada boom. And then when you open it up, you know exactly what size is what. Everything is sorted. You don't have to dig. You already know exactly what you have. So I know we're going to need this guy. I don't think I have a lot of shorty sizes. I might have a couple from previous 480X. Oh, look. We have a 40 small size, so we can throw that guy in. That'll be our pilot jet. Always check the size, guys. Always check the size. 40. Good. Bada boom, bada boom. We'll throw this 38 back in there. 
And you can already see I have a couple of those from other 400 EXs. And I think we're gonna go probably one 160. I have a lot of 160s, so I think I'll shoot for a 160 for now. And then we'll check it after that. Okay. That'll take care of that. And then we'll throw this guy's a 148, so this guy can go right in here. Boom. And that takes care of that. I can put all these back. Let's get this guy in the ultrasonic cleaner. Bada bing, bada boom. We'll get her back on the quad in no time. All right, guys. And while we are waiting for the carburetor to be done with its ultrasonic cleaning cycle, we could get a couple little things done on this. That way, when the carburetor is done, we just put it back together and we should be ready to run and ride. We could swap out these rear bald ass bald eagle tires. Somebody was giving her the full send on that one for sure. We can slap a chain on this sucker, put some top the oil off, put the tank, the plastics. I found the plastic cover underneath the gas tank, uh, the OEM cover. And then that's pretty much it, I think. Maybe change out the Nerf bar nets. That's pretty much it. So I've already got the jack here. I'm just gonna go ahead and swap out these rear tires for something a little more treadious. right that's number one out of the way boom boom now this one is gonna have to have a spot sealed on it so i'll be working on that first then putting it back down on the ground to be number two out of the way now i stole these wheels and tires off of a 2006 honda 250ex because they look so much sweeter on this non but uh i have other used tires but i'm very particular about how i want an atv to look when i'm done and Quite honestly, I think these look really good on this. I like the bias tire look with a little bit of curved edge here. Um, but what 400 actually looks bad? Just kidding. That's one down, one to go. I think we're gonna go ahead and slap this chain on first. That way she's done, done. This is always a pain in the butt. Just trying to figure out how to get this guy down through there. There we go. Yeah, 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 see, yeah. Uh, we got a couple extra linkers here. So we're going to have to pop one of these guys out real quick. No big deal. No big deal. I love these little chain breakers, man. They make it so freaking easy to uh, pop these pins out. Unbelievable. There we go. Yeah, baby. Boom. Just like that, a section of chain is removed. Okay. Give me all of you. 
Oh, wow. I actually really liked that master link. That wasn't the master link for this chain, though. That was actually the master link that I bought from a tractor place. And it was an O-ring master link, which isn't going to hurt anything, but... Oh, wow. That sprocket and hub's bent. We may have to uh, hit that side out a little bit, right? Yep. Okay. Don't tell anybody I did this. Hmm. All right, guys, so we only have a couple more things to do before this is ready to run and ride. I have the chain on. I have both of the rear wheels and tires on this thing. The carburetor, watch where you're going, plastics. The carburetor, it just got done in the ultrasonic cleaner. Let's take a look and see how well the Viver ultrasonic cleaner cleans these things. Now, I only took this up to 50 Celsius but it goes all the way up to 85, I believe. 85 degrees Celsius. It's still a little hot. I've had it sitting in here for an extra couple minutes, but the reality is, is I, I just wanted you guys to see how well these get clean. Look at that. That is literally like brand spanking new looking. That's as close as you can get. Now I know there's still a little bit of debris and had I left it in there for a full cycle, we probably wouldn't have had anything left on it, but this whole thing was covered and so was this carburetor that is leaking all over me. And I'm just using a little bit of simple green diluted 50-50 to water. And that's pretty much it, guys. I'll blow this out with air real quick. Bada bing, bada boom. We'll get her slapped back on. Oh, be good to go. I'm excited. I really like 400 EXs. They're just a simpler one of the machines to work on out of all the other chaotic type of machines where... You know, it's just the engineering design of some machines isn't exactly the best. So to have one like this where it works well, it lives a long time, it's reliable a long time. There's really only one major issue with these and it's that they start smoking on the top end. The oil ring actually goes bad after a long time. Outside of that, these things are great, man. They really are. Yeah, I dig it though, guys. This thing's gonna be a ripper, that's for sure. And we just gotta finish getting this thing put together. And then we'll be on our way to listing a 400EX today. And some lucky person's gonna get to buy this on Marketplace. I don't know about lucky, but... Maybe not lucky, but... Definitely going to get something decent if they buy this one. You know what I mean? Like, they're going to get one that was gone over. They know the ins and outs of the machine, so they don't have to worry that what they're buying is going to be a piece of crap. Plus, you get a video that goes behind it that shows you kind of what all goes into this process of checking it over and whatnot. So, and that's that. She's all done and ready to go. Slide this bad mamma jamma back on there. And then hopefully we've got an issue free 400X carburetor. I do want to check the air screw. Do this on every single machine. One half, two, half, three, probably three and a half, right? Nope, three. 
half one, half two, half three. I'm gonna leave that alone because I know for a fact that that is uh, stock 400X carburetor setting. Let's see if we can get this throttle cable down in there. Boom, got it. Okay, that's that. Sweet. All right, guys, we're gonna go ahead and give this thing a first fire up. Um, I have the jump pack on her because that battery isn't so great. And so I just want to hear it run, make sure it's not going to uh, spit things or, you know, make all kinds of crazy noises or anything like that. So it's going to slide these covers on real quick and hopefully this thing will run okay. I've got no gas in it though. I'm just going to do that starting fluid and that'll be that. All right, that's that. Let's see if this thing will fire up. jumper pack is this really oh there we go oh I can't do both come on bad connection. that's about the most of what we're going to hear until we put the gas tank and some gas on this. So maybe we'll do that now before we keep trying to fire this thing up. And then that way, if it runs, we know it's just going to run. All right, let's give this a try again. See if we get any further this time. Ah. Need a better battery, guys. All right, 
Let's try this again. We're going to car battery this time. I'm hoping that helps get this thing fired up. see <laughs> well that's why we don't put everything back together because when we do put everything back together um, we wind up having to take it all back apart I can see this head cover is leaking I'm gonna have to take that back off again reseal that it's leaking down onto the header and that's what's causing this leak and a little bit of smokiness the exhaust looks good though I don't think we'll be putting a top end on this but the silencer is kind of loud but what are we gonna do about that really so but let me get this cover fixed up. Let me get all these plastics put on, and then we'll take this thing for a little ripper. Well, you can see that doesn't look too good. That's a nice big old pile of oil. Day number two. We're back to work on the 400EX. I figured I would give you guys... Oh, God, if I could stop knocking down everything in the shop... Um, I figured I would give you guys a little insight as to some things I did yesterday on this. Um, just a real quick recap. I did not do any filming on this, but I probably should have. Uh, I took the head cover off. Three of the bolt holes were stripped. Uh, I did um, drill those out, and I have an M6 by 10 kit around here somewhere, but I helicoiled three of those and um, put that all back together made sure that was good to go and then this side cover here was leaking something fierce man i thought it was missing an o-ring here the one uh thread was stripped so i had to also helicoil that because i guess today's uh i can't tighten down bolts on a 400x day so um that one was over tightened we had to tap that and also helicoil that and so now that is not leaking either all of the stuff on the floor is just leftover residue basically from it falling down on the floor and then overnight just kind of spreading itself across the floor as it naturally does the the original puddle was probably only about that big and then it just kind of flattens itself out over time on the level ground so anyways now that we got this fixed, not leaking. This fixed, not leaking. And there's an oil filter in there now because there was no oil filter before. Now we can clean this up, get this whole thing put back together finally, and then um, take this thing for a ripper and see what she's like. Uh, I'm kind of excited, but uh, wishing I would have picked up a battery at Walmart this morning. That's kind of where we're at at this moment, guys. So let's get it.
this does that not work <laughs> well yeah I don't know that clutch is gonna need some work though dude what the hell I don't know man really like honestly I'm actually kind of glad the editing on this video is a little more raw because this is the stuff I run into literally all the time and I never show you guys this stuff and I don't know why I don't know why I just don't show it for some reason because I think it can be a little boring at times and I like to keep the videos a little more exciting because I think that that will get me more views and stuff but maybe that's not the ticket Yep, don't do that. Oh boy. Okay. Well, I guess we're working on the clutch instead of filming a short. All right, boys, it is time. I got the clutch fixed. We'll talk about it in a second. Let's get this thing fired up quick and uh, take her for a little rippy poo, man. I'm super excited to get to ride this thing. Why'd you die now? That's not fair. All right, guys, we're back in action. Oh, yeah, baby. She wheelies too easy. Zippy ties didn't even hold for two goddamn seconds. <sighs> How the hell? Well, at least we got that on film, yeah? <laughs> I thought I was gonna be smooth rocking out a second gear wheelie. And she was like, nah, not today, dude. I think we're just gonna pop start this quick, yeah? All right, let's go, buddy. Oh. Okay. 
not what I had in mind. Okay, let's go. What the fuck was that? The battery. Bro. Well, when you don't have enough battery power to start the thing with the switch, this is the old school way to bump start. Okay, now, you're gonna play nice this time, right? Yeah. Oh, you bitch. This fucking thing. Especially uphill. <sighs> Thank you. Okay, now let's get back to riding. Yes, I can friggin' wheel it. Be careful with this one. Oh God. Second gear wheelies, baby. And I'm on the tank too. This thing is just awesome, man. I know what's gonna happen as soon as I get off of this to set my phone up. This is going to, uh, These things are sticky, kind of gross. Third gear. You're gonna die, aren't you? You're gonna die. I just, I don't have no trust. <laughs> I know it's gonna shut off. So maybe I should just hurry up. Please don't shut off on me. All right, let's get it.
<laughs> oh god. She's a ripper. Oh yeah. Second gear, what do you say? She ain't wanting to slide too good. That's kind of sucks. She runs, she rides, she does a wheelie, she throws your boy off of it. I'd say we're good on this one, guys. Let me know which one of the projects inside the shop is your favorite. Thank you all for watching. God bless. See you in the next one. Peace out. All right. Want to get blown?